Alright, welcome back to the next video in this tutorial series. In the last video, we set up some collisions and got our player moving. And we are going to give our player the controls that it is going to need for the rest of the game. So something I want to set up real quick before we get into that, if we select our main character here, our player object, highlight it, and let's add a behavior. This is going to be temporary. We're going to do this so we can test parts of the game until we get a camera system set up. So add a behavior and let's select scroll to and that adds that to our player character. That way we can move all this stuff to the bottom of the layer, I'm sorry, the bottom of the layout where we are going to uh, do most of our work anyway. So I'm going to highlight everything on the layout and I'm just going to move it down. And you can see that I do have snapping turned on from our last video. So that helps me uh, place it pixel perfect anywhere in a 32 by 32 pixel range. Okay, I'm going to unselect all that stuff. And then I'm going to highlight my little palette here and move it off the side. And then I'm going to set up these walls to where we have a little bit more room to work with. Maybe something like that. And then we can move our floor to cover the whole area. And then I'll give him a hole to fall down there. And then we can, uh, we can move this. Let's move this to right about there and move our jump through over. And I'm going to turn on, if you click on the layout, I'm going to go to show grid. And that just shows us where our 32 by 32 grids are. So I know that he needs at least five of these grids to be able to jump and not hit his head on the ledge above. So one, two, three, four. I need to go up one more. There we go. So set up something like that. Uh, we're also going to need, I'm going to uh, highlight, control, click, and drag out a copy. I'm going to move that down. And I'm going to zoom in here. And now I am going to set my grid size to a height of 16 and a width of 16. So now I'm going to move this up and move that down. And actually, let's move him up one more. That way he can have enough height to jump up to this next ledge. But if he runs into the side of it without jumping, it's going to turn him the other direction which is what our yellow walls do. And that is some code that we are going to set up in this video. Let's get some things straightened out over here. First, let's rename our layout. We should only have one layout. So if we click on it, we can come over here and I'm going to call this, um, I'm just going to call it level one. And I'm going to establish a naming convention right away. So I'm going to say level one in all caps. So capital L E V E L. And then I'm going to do an underscore and I'm just the number one. Much later on in the project, we are going to reference this number while keeping uh, the rest of this name intact. So we're going to be able to call uh, the name level and then change the number through code. So just level underscore one, and I'm going to leave it all caps because that's going to show me what my, um, all my layouts are going to be in all caps. And then if we go to our event sheet over here and click on it, we can right click and say rename. And then I'm going to put all my event sheets in lowercase. And I'm going to start every event sheet with an E and an underscore. 
and then the name of the event sheet. And this one I'm just going to call controls. And then we will work out some subfolders a little bit later. But for now, uh, we are going to create our very first variable. There are many in this game. But for now, let's uh, select our player character or our player object. Let's go to edit instance variables. We're going to create an instance variable that is personal to our player object. So add new instance variable. I'm going to call this uh, running left. And the type I'm going to change to a boolean, which means true or false. So the initial value I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to leave that empty. We'll change it in code. But this says running left, true or false. When we start programming the controls, I want to be able to toggle instead of having to say, yes, it's running left. No, it's not running left. I want to just say, hey, whichever direction it was heading, change it to the other one. Now we can head over into our controls event sheet and I'm going to add an event and in our sprites folder and in our objects folder I'm gonna select our player and I'm gonna scroll down to is boolean instance variable set and running left is our instance variable click done so when it's true we want our player to run left to make it true so let's add an action and go to our sprites, objects, player, scroll down to the platform behaviors, and we're going to say simulate control left. So when this variable is true, we're going to go left. All right, let's highlight this entire block, control C to copy, control V to paste, and then just select this one part of this block right here just so only this part the variable highlighted and press I on the keyboard to invert so now saying this is false we are not running left so we need to go right so let's double click on this and change it to right I'm gonna go ahead and left or right click and add a group I'm going to call this running and I'm going to move both of these into that group. Now let's go ahead and come down here, add another event, go to our sprites, objects, player, and I'm going to type in on collision with another object. And that object is going to be collision wall. When we collide with the wall, I'm going to add an action, go to sprites, objects, player, scroll down to our variables, toggle boolean. So we don't have to set anything if we're toggling it. And that's the one we want to toggle. So no matter which way our character or our player is running, Whenever it hits the yellow wall, it's going to toggle that boolean, which is going to simulate going the other direction. All right, let's try that out. And there we go. He changed directions. He hit the yellow wall. And we still have our platform behavior controls and everything is working all right now obviously he was facing the wrong direction uh, when he was running to his left so let's change that up here where we say is running left when it is true we know that our player is set to the right his natural state is facing to the right so when he's running left we want to mirror that so let's go to our sprites, objects, player, and mirror, set mirrored to mirrored. Now when you mirror something, whenever it is told to go the other direction, we have told the sprite to mirror itself, but we didn't tell it to unmirror itself down here. So 
Let's go ahead and set that up. Add an action. Let's go find our player and get the mirrored set mirrored action again and select not mirrored. So when we are running left, we're going to simulate pressing left and we're going to mirror the sprite. When we're not running left, we're going to simulate going right and not be mirrored. Okay, that should be it for running. I'm going to close that group, get that out of the way. And then I'm going to make another group and I'm going to call this change directions and I'm going to drag this whole block into that and actually I think that's all we need for change directions and if you're wondering to yourself is he going to create a group for everything we do the answer is yes by doing this and and labeling everything when we go through our code trying to debug it or find a problem everything is organized it's going to make it so much easier to find alright let's go over to object types in our project panel and right click on it and add a new object type and let's scroll down to touch so now our touch is added and I'm going to go ahead and right click again on the object types folder and add a subfolder. I'm going to call this input and then I'm going to drag touch into the input. All right now let's go ahead and add another event. Let's go to input select touch and I'm going to select on any touch start this condition will be triggered when any touch input begins. Basically, whenever you click or you touch the screen of a mobile, mobile device, this will be triggered. And it doesn't matter if you long press, hold, double tap, anything. As soon as you touch it, this will get triggered. So with on any touch start, I want to add an action sprites, objects, player, and scroll down to platform. I want to simulate control and that control is jump. I can go ahead and tell you one of the issues we're going to run into the timing of the player's uh, touch action. One way we can eliminate any other problems is by making sure that the only time our touch input is recognized is when our player is touching a floor. Double click in this empty area and and let's select our player and scroll down to the platform and we want to know is on floor. So now as long as the player is on floor whenever the player touches a screen or clicks then our player will jump. Okay, Let's go ahead and create a group for that and I'll just call this jumping and then I'll move that into the jumping group and I'm going to slide it up so it's in that order and then let's preview there is our guy and I'm going to use click as the touch control and that is working perfectly alright there we go our player now has control and functionality but let's uh, do something about the animation when he's jumping the animation is still playing so I'm going to go ahead and well, let's go ahead and just create the group now. I'm going to call this player animation. And I'm going to add an event to player animation. And I'm going to grab our player sprite. And I'm going to say when the player is on floor, because when he is actually touching the floor, then he can run. 
pick our player again and set animation and we named that a and I underscore run alright should look like that so any other time that he is not on the floor he's going to be in the air obviously and we have only one other animation that well we we have an idle animation as well but that's going to be used for uh, something else whenever we don't have control of the player so our only two animations that we need is running and jumping instead of coding that he's not on the floor to play the jump animation we can just say when he is on the floor play the run animation otherwise play the jump animation so I'm just gonna add a new event select system and we're gonna use the else condition okay and then that will be we'll add the action get our player and we'll set the animation to uh, jump let's play that so he hits the wall he faces the directions he's supposed to be going he faces back when we jump he plays the jump animation when he lands back down he goes back to running there we go all right pretty cool he is set up we can close that up our players controls are set up we actually won't be coming back to this for quite a while we will need to come back when we add some uh, sound effects for sure and also when we implement the pause feature but that's going to be uh, several videos from now so with that done I am going to end this video and in the next video we are going to get our tile map set up so that we can start designing levels so I will see you in the next video and don't forget to save